Matthew chapter 14 and 25. If you're there, would you say amen? And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto the water, unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. For a few minutes, I want to talk to you on uh, out of Matthew 14 and 30 there where we find Peter, Scripture says, and he beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. For a few minutes, I want to talk to you on the thought, beginning to sink. Beginning to sink. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that in it, it contains everything that we would ever need. I thank you, Lord, for the encouragement. I thank you, Lord, for the strength, the joy. I thank you for the grace, the mercy. I thank you for the warnings. I thank you for the practical principles that we can apply to our lives and every facet of them, Lord. I pray now, Lord, as we turn to your word, that once again our hearts would be stirred and reminded, Father, of the seriousness, the great, great, great brevity of the moment in which we live now and that we would respond accordingly to that word. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And together we say, in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Amen. Beginning to sink. So good to see Brother Gilliam here today and his family. Amen. We're thankful he's here, all of our guests. There are two sights in human life which fill the heart with profound sorrow. The first is of a person who has sunk, whether man or woman. We are all familiar, no doubt, a name would spring to mind as we think of those that have sunk below. They were no doubt admired and respected individuals, people of influence, fathers and mothers, grandparents, politicians and teachers, preachers, leaders, business owners. And it would bring sorrow to even the hardest heart, a tear to every eye, shame to a community, a home, and a church, for they sank and are no more. But to the perceiving heart, there is another sight perhaps more tragic than the first. It is that of a man who is beginning to sink. Beginnings are always mighty and momentous. As I was talking to Brother Stephen Lejeune, uh, Friday evening, talking about Eastgate Bible College, how much he's enjoying it, he just learned about the laws of first mention because beginnings are powerful. Beginnings are very powerful. And so it is here in our text this morning we, are, we find Reverend Simon Peter, an apostle, a leader, a preacher, a man of great faith who has not sunk into the depths, but he's not dead, he's not gone too far, but we find him just as he's beginning to sink. Why, I ask myself, is he beginning to sink? What sin has this man committed? He, he began to sink, my friends, not because he was wicked. He began to sink not even because of sin. He began to sink because he was Simon. Simon Peter. The other disciples, they were all safe and sound. It never occurred to them to leave the vessel. They were men of normalcy and common sense. And they knew the difference between land and sea. But Peter was different. It's this difference that actually is what made him great. He was reckless and headstrong. A little crazy and cutting edge. Out of the box. Or maybe we say out of the boat. Peter would follow the moment. He really wouldn't wait for reasons or explanations. He would do what no one else would do. And it, were these, it was these characteristics that made him who he was. Why he no doubt was given the keys to the kingdom. Was chosen to preach the very powerful day of Pentecost. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive. We're still quoting it today. And it truly summarizes that great gospel in one verse. That was Peter. He was in the inner circle. 
It was Peter who would begin to walk on water. And it was Peter who would begin to sink in water. He was led into danger on that stormy night, not by his weakness, but by his greatness. Let me just remind you today and preach to someone, myself included, who thinks that destruction only comes through our flaws. And let me just remind us all that sometimes our perils reach us through our best. That which is charming in us. Our talents, our strengths. For I guard, see, I, 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 I'm inclined to guard my weaknesses. I know better than to do or go or think that. But my strengths can be equally as dangerous. This is why every man must be saved, not only from sin, but I must be saved from Matthew Tuttle. Matthew Tuttle has brought more misery to my life than the devil has. And it hasn't been my weaknesses that got me in the most of my trouble. It's been my strengths. Save me from the part of me that's good. And don't let it become my downfall. I find Martha in a kitchen stirring a pot, red face, sweat pouring down her face. She's, she's working. She's in, she's in love with work. She's in love with serving the master. She is lost and caught up in what she's doing and not who she's doing it for. Let me tell you, when, what, when you're more in love with what you're doing than who you're doing it for, you're beginning to sink. But Jesus said, Mary has chosen the better. What, what was the better? The better was him. The better was him. He's the reason I'm doing this. Martha forgot the reason you were cooking and the whole thing started as a good plan but then it became about you and your service and it was no longer about Him. Let me just remind us as we go into Christmas and we're, we're having parties and trees and lights and gifts and songs and foods and, and, and let me, that, I'm not against that wonderful things but in the midst of all the gifts and in the midst of all the, the presents and the lights let us not forget who we're doing it for. Let us not forget that the greatest gift I can give is not to that of my children but to give my God my own heart and maybe I don't have the money to buy my child an Xbox 360 but friend I can give myself to God I can't afford the latest PlayStation but I can give my heart to Jesus Christ oh oh dear pastor tell me please how can I grant my heavenly father with this gift oh it's simple you simply must repent of your sins and you must be buried in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and today you can make that choice if you're sitting on this pew hear me again dear sinner you must repent hear me again dear friend you must be born again of water and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ that your sins may be remitted and that they may be washed white as snow and friend you must be filled with the Holy Ghost it is not a question oh today you must be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and when you get it you know how you'll know the Bible says you'll begin to speak with another tongue for the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof so is every man that is born of the Spirit and today you can be baptized today you can be filled with the Holy Ghost today you can repent of your sins and you can give it to Jesus hallelujah but if I am more caught up in what I'm doing and not who I'm doing it for I am I am beginning to sink I must keep my eyes on Jesus that's why God gave us more than a message he gave us a man an example that my eyes may be fixed upon that Christ Jesus my Savior and so it is that Peter is sinking because of his abilities, not his inabilities. He is sinking not because of lack of talent, but because of talent. He's beginning to sink. And it's interesting to note where he sank. For friends, he does not begin to sink in the Atlantic Ocean. He does not begin his downward spiral in an unfamiliar territory. No, he begins to sink in the Sea of Galilee. The very place where he had been born. He grew up playing around the banks and 
no doubt took his little aluminum boat out into this water as a child. It was on the seashores of the Sea of Galilee that he played hide and go seek. And he knew every nook and cranny, the best fishing hole. He knew it in the summer, the spring, the fall, and the winter. He, he had been there a thousand times before. He knew the place like the back of his hand. It was not unfamiliar territory, my dear friends, that Peter was in. It was very familiar. If you were to ask Peter, Oh, Peter, do you know your way around the Sea of Galilee? He would laugh at you and say, Oh, that's like me asking you if you know your way to the altar. That's like me asking you if you know your way to the prayer room. Of course I know. I know. I know my way around the Sea of Galilee. Of course you know your way to the altar. It's familiar. It's familiar. Familiar waters. Now there, were, uh, there was another time he began to sink. A place, uh, the high priest and people that were unfamiliar to him. Uh, people he did not know, surrounded by those he did not, was not familiar with. Uh, but this was different, for he began to sink not in an unfamiliar place. Uh, he began to sink around his best friends. He began to sink around those who loved him most, his brothers, his fellow ministers. Uh, he began to sink in a familiar place. Let me tell you, it's sad to think of someone sinking in India. But to sink at home seems almost worse. To forget the sanctuary and bended knee. To put aside purity. Laying off praise and altar calls. Come on somebody. But I pray this morning... That, that we, that I would call out as Peter did with the realization uh, and say, Lord, save me uh, lest I perish. Uh, Lord, save me uh, lest I perish. I'm sinking, I'm beginning to sink in familiar waters. We've noticed why and where, but it's interesting to know when he began to sink. The timing is interesting. For Peter is not sinking as he's cursing God. He's not beginning to sink watching dirty movies. He, he's no, 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 no. He's beginning to sink right after he fed 5,000 people with five biscuits and two fish. He's beginning to sink while he's walking on water. He is beginning to sink at the height of doing things supernaturally no man has ever done. He's walking on water. He's doing miraculous things. He's at the peak. He, he's at the place of, he's devoted. He's left He's left his ships behind. He's, he's following after Jesus Christ. He's in a miracle minute. He's a, he's a devoted Christian. Uh, but he's beginning to sink. Dear friends, this is not a youth. This is not Mr. Inexperienced. This is a man that has heard the call of the master who has witnessed the dead being raised and the blinded eyes being opened. Uh, but I'm going to tell you today, uh, no matter, no matter, no matter how long you've been in this, uh, no matter how familiar you are, if we don't guard ourselves, uh, friend, we can begin to sink. Uh, sad reality is that in every community, in every church, there's men and women who begin to sink, not in their youth, but after years of discipleship and service. Sometimes it's the deceitfulness of riches which causes it. Sometimes it's the absorption of business and sometimes it's the constant subtle influence of ungodliness in the home. Sometimes it's weariness and well-doing and the dropping of life to lower levels. Uh, secret things in the heart that no one knows but God. While no one would declare him sunken, they would actually declare him quite successful. Not moral wrecks. Not tragedies. Men that have good reputations. They're still kind at home. They're still diligent in business. But in the heart. But in the heart. They've begun. To sink. There is a difference. In the way they talk. Their accent. The, the atmosphere. Around their character. If these words today make you uncomfortable, I pray that you, like Simon, would say, Lord, save me, lest I perish. Please, dear friend, awaken, let us awaken ourselves out of. We, oh, we, well, this church has been here for 85. Hey, hey, 
We're not talking to junior saints here. We're talking to the Apostle Peter. And if the Apostle Peter can begin to sink, none of us are exempt. And so I stand before you with a warning this morning and say, watch where you are. Let's look where we are. Let's guard our hearts. Uh, let's take inventory of who we are. Well, Pastor, Pastor, I'm, I'm not going astray. I'm still on the right path. Oh, it's interesting to note that Peter was as well. For Peter had not strayed from the path. As a matter of fact, he was pursuing after the path. He was not in disobedience. He was in direct obedience. God had not said, do not come. For had God said, don't get out of the boat, Peter. If God, if Jesus would have said, bud, you'd be a fool to get out of the ship. If, if Jesus would have said, stay in the boat, and he still got out of the boat, then we would say, oh, it served him well. The man of disobedience, of course he's sinking. But he is not in disobedience. He's in direct obedience. He's walking on water because Jesus said, walk on water just because oh I'm on the straight and narrow just because you're here today just because you got a Bible tucked on your arm just because you got uh, the, the blessed assurance memorized does not exempt us from sinking into the seas of life You can sink while you're on the right path. You can sink doing what you've done for years, friend. And if you don't believe me, friend, I can give you names and addresses. It happens every day and it happens in the church. It happens behind the pulpit. It happens. Oh, yes, it does. They didn't end up dead overnight. Somewhere they begin to sink. Somewhere they begin to go under. Somewhere they began and they failed to cry out and realize, God, save me lest I perish. What's, what, what is it that caused him to sink? What is it that be caused him to begin to sink? Uh, Peter began to sink uh, when he began to fear. He began to fear. It's when he took his eyes off of Jesus. When you take your eyes off of Jesus... Uh, that's when things change. When it no come on. When it no longer is about Mary at the feet of Jesus, but it's Martha in the kitchen. When it's all about what I'm doing, and I'm looking around at my circumstance, and I'm and look. Hey, the wind didn't get more boisterous. The storm didn't get more severe. The waves had not increased in their magnitude. There was nothing that had changed. The only thing that changed in this story is the direction of his eyes. They went from looking at Jesus to looking at things around him. And dear friend, I. I warn you uh, that if your eyes are not on him uh, then you're beginning to sink and you need to rise up like apostle peter did uh, and say lord save me uh, lest i perish uh, if you're uh, oh pastor pastor uh, you know i'm really concerned because i've been watching sister so and so and brother so and so and they're doing that and, and they're doing that hey friend uh, if you're looking at sally and joe and bob uh, you're beginning to sink uh, you can't make it to jesus looking at johnny you can't make it to jesus looking at sally you got to get your eyes back on the reason you're in this thing. If you don't keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on, you got to get your eyes off doctor's reports. You got to get your eyes off Google. You got to get your eyes out of the TV trash box. You got to get your eyes off the sports stars. You got to get your eyes to Jesus. Come on, I'm not, hey, hey, I'm not looking at President Trump for my hope and my security. I'm not watching Fox News for my information. I got my eyes on the gospel, which is the good news. I got my eyes on a Trump. Oh, it's the Trump. My ear is tuned to a Trump, but it's not Donald Trump. It's the last Trump. Trump. And, oh. and if you would tune your ears to the trumpet of heaven and tune your eyes to the news of the gospel, you could wall. Oh, you'll find yourself lifting above the storms of life. Fear has no place. Oh, fear has to be gone. Doubt is remitted when you get your eyes on Jesus. And as long as as long as I'm looking at Jesus, the Bible says he was walking on the water. I said as long as he was looking, he had dominion over what was ever, whatever was under his foot. <laughs> I said when you got your eyes on Jesus, he says I'll give you dominion over anything you put your, f I'll give you possession you can own it and you can dominate it. Hey, serpent, bam, be under my foot. Come on, cancer is, un come on somebody. That's what we are. As long as I'm walking at him. 
I'm walking places I shouldn't be. I know some of you sitting here like you've deserved it, but I'm just going to be honest. Uh, hey, visitor friend, don't look at all them that, th- that sit here like they're self-entitled, righteous people. No, 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 no. Watch me. I don't deserve to be here. I'm walking in a place. Uh, I don't deserve to be. This is like Peter walking on water, me being on this stage, uh, me being in this church house, uh, me having my sins remitted. Uh, hey, friend, uh, I know some of us sit here like Joe Cool, like we earned it, but baby, I'm not one of those people. I'm a dude that gets up every point, even the ones I've heard before. Uh, I'm the guy shouting at the songs I don't even like because I realize I don't even deserve to be singing them. I don't even deserve to be here, but but for the grace of God. But And as long, as long as he, the Bible says in 29 and 14, he said, come and Peter came and he walked on the water as long as his eyes were on Jesus. Why? Why is it so important that he's watching Jesus? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus, Jesus isn't walking on water. See, my whole life they've told me that Jesus comes walking on the water. But that's not what the Bible says. You got to, so oh, it doesn't know what the Bible says. Look at verse 25. 25. And fourth watch night, Jesus came walking on the. Now, Peter was walking on the water. Jesus wasn't walking on the water. He was walking on the sea. What's the difference? I'll tell you what the difference was. That he was in control of everything going on. He was walking. He was walking on the whole situation. He was already walking where he had been. And he was already walking where Peter would be. He was walking on the... He was walking on the big picture. And as long as I, the little man, can keep my eye on the guy that's got control of it all, I don't have to worry about the storm. He's walking on the sea. I don't have to worry about the cancer. He's walking on the cancer. I don't have to worry about the kumoshatayalarabah. Let me preach to somebody that came in fearful. You need to get your eyes on the man that's walking on every situation in your life. That's walking on everything that's going on in your life. He's in in control you just need to get your eyes Woo! look at your neighbor and say he's walking on the sea he's walking on the sea no 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 you need to say it like you mean you he's walking on whatever it is you're worried about come on say it like you're worried about come on he's walking on the kidney problem he, he's walking on the yabahaya. he's what he's already in your next step he's already in your tomorrow he's already in the oh, he is he is there he's there he's there he's on he's in control he's in control if you keep your eye on him you ain't gonna sink said, if you just keep your eye on him, you ain't going to sink. Keep your eyes on the master. I said, keep your eyes on the master. Stop looking at people. I said, stop. You know how many people are going to go to hell because they got their eyes on other people? Well, sister so-and-so said, who cares what sister so-and-so said? Sister so-and-so is always going to say something. Brother so-and-so is always going to do something. Young person Johnny's always going to post something stupid. But I refuse to sink because my eyes are, come on, uh, are dialed in on stupid salad. My eyes are going to be marked uh, and lined up with Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to live for Hakarama Satayaba. But you know what I find perplexing in this story? I find it perplexing that, that as he begins to sink, not one of his friends cried out. I don't read anywhere where Matthew stood up and said, hey, Peter, watch out, bub. I don't see Mark or Luke, any of them, none of them. These are preachers. (laughs) These are guys writing the Bible. But they couldn't see it. Hmm. I said they couldn't see it. No one saw it. I don't know how many times I've said that about people. You ever said that, Bishop? Bishop? I didn't see it coming. Poof, they're gone. I, didn't, I never saw it coming. Mark never saw it. He didn't see that. There was only two people that knew he was beginning to sink. Jesus and Peter. Because when you begin to sink, oh, once you're sunk, we all talk about it. But when you begin to sink and you lay out of the prayer room, 
your mind starts going places. I can't see your mind. and I don't know the thoughts of your heart. But you know. You don't know the way I think. But he knows. I want to talk to somebody sitting in this room today. No one has a clue. Nobody knows. But you know. You know. You know. Oh, I know your wife would be shocked. Your husband would be perplexed. Your pastor would be amazed. But inside you begin to sink. Oh, I, I, a stranger. It, for, for me to get into it, would, it would be something that I, I shouldn't meddle with. Uh, but, but there is one here today who is no stranger uh, and knows. And he's walking up and down the aisles uh, this morning. Uh, and he's ready for you. He's just looking for an arm to be stretched out. Uh, and a voice to cry out, help me God, lest I perish. Save me God, lest I die. But what's amazing about the story is that when he begins to sink, he cries out. He didn't have his head underwater. Other people didn't even know he was going under. He still got his hair parted, his suit on. He's still looking good. He's still on the praise team. He's still singing in the choir. He's still teaching his Sunday school class. It was just just a beginning of sinking. I'm going at all. But what's beautiful is that when he cried out, he said, if I don't cry out, I'm going to die. I'll tell you what else I find beautiful about this. It's his ability to self-analyze himself. One of the greatest failures in men and women is our inability to be introspective and to be honest about who we are and where we're at. And you, oh sure baby, you can lie to me. But who cares? I'm not going to burn in hell for you. Oh, that's harsh. That's reality, baby. So stop trying to fool me and be honest with you. Peter could be honest with himself. He could look at his own self and say, I'm not where I need to be. If I don't do something, I'm going to die. And there's some people, come on. Some people, and there are some that God gives me insight to, and I see a a sinking. You see it. And so, come on, Bubba. let's, Let's get in the prayer room. Come on, man. Be faithful. Come on. I've been missing you at church. But instead of being introspective, they get angry. Getting angry at me. Getting angry at the word of the Lord. Getting angry at your fellow brother who is in some ways trying to help. For God's word is coming to you today. And if you can either get angry or you can hear and you can self-assess. You can look at your... Hey, I'm, hey, this sermon is not for you to look at your husband and be like, Oh, this is really good. That's what he needs. This is not a message where you look down the aisle and say, That's for Johnny. He really needed to hear what preacher preached. This isn't one you share on Facebook and tag somebody in it because they need it. This is the one that you sit in your pew. You put your hand on your heart you close your eyes and you re- and you assess and you say am I where I was yesterday am I am I am I at the same place oh am I still worshiping like I used to worship I used to be in the choir but I'm not no more I go come on you ought to just look at yourself I don't have time to go down the whole list go down your own list go down your own life where are you friend are you growing are you closer to the master or have you sunken and begin to sink if I don't cry I'm going to die I said if I don't cry oh no. go ahead and sit there sink away sink away and be remembered as a man who disappointed us As a man who failed your family. As a man who disappointed. Come on somebody. Go ahead and sit there tough and proud. And be your tough little self. Uh, But you won't be remembered as great. But if oh. Oh the humble cry. Oh, the humble cry of a man who can look at himself at a koya and be honest with his destiny and his location and realize I'm not praying like I used to pray. I'm not worshiping like I used to worship. I'm not involved in ministry like I used to be involved in ministry. Oh, this is not a good Sunday morning. It's what God gave me for the church. Hey, I don't always like to preach it, but I got to give you what God told me. And there's someone in this room. And friend, you got everybody fooled, but you're beginning to sink. Please, dear friend, 
extend your arms to the master and cry, save me, Lord, lest I perish. I don't know how far he had walked. Maybe it was 50 or 100 yards. I don't know how far he was from Jesus, but I know he was too far from the boat. He couldn't get back to the boat. He was too far from his friends for them to save him. He was too far from his family for them to save him. He was too far from the shore for the shore to save him. He was too far from the safety of the life vest to save him. But let me tell you, he might have been too far from his friends. and He might have been too far from his family. And he might have been too far from the shore. He might have been too far from the safety of a life vest. But he was never too far from Jesus. I said you might be... Oh. I don't know how far you've walked away. I don't know how deep you are in. Maybe the water's at your knees. Maybe it's at your hips. But you're not too far from Jesus. And he's just right there. He's there at the mention of his name this morning. If you will just raise your hand. And if you will cry. Oh, don't worry about what Mark. Mark's not sinking. John's not sinking uh, Thomas isn't sinking you're sinking uh, and you gotta I've gotta raise my hands uh, and I've gotta say save me Lord the best part of the story is that he began to sing but he didn't <laughs> not everybody drowns not everybody dies not everybody, come on somebody, goes under. No, there are those like you that begin to sink, but that lift their hands and say, Lord, save me, lest I perish. And it, are the, and it is these, these are the men that we look upon and bestow them as heroes. We say that is a man of God, not because he began to sink. No, but because he cried out to God and said, save me. Oh, dear friend and father, do you want to be the hero of your family? Family, uh, then you need to learn how to cry out uh, and say Jesus uh, don't let me go under uh, Jesus uh, don't let me die uh, and you can be saved today I feel the Holy Ghost this morning I said I feel the grace of God as he stands there ready and as soon as he said, Jesus, how far was Jesus away? Maybe 150 yards. But the moment he said, Jesus, he was there and had him by the hand. I said he had him by the hand. Come on, somebody. I know you're sinking. And you might not can see because of the waves in front of you. And, and maybe, friend, uh, the salt water's lapping uh, at your eyes and they're burning. Uh, and maybe you got them closed. Uh, uh, but when you can't see, uh, you can still cry. Uh, and when you cry, uh, even though I might not be able to see him, I'll feel a hand. Uh, reach out and grab He'll grab you this morning. Uh, he always saves. Uh, I said he always saves. Uh, he always saves the man uh, that will be honest with him. Himself. He always saves the mama that'll run up to an altar on a Sunday morning and say, Lord, save me. Save me lest I perish. Oh, I've got notes to go, but I feel the Holy Ghost here right here this morning. I said, I feel the master as he's calling. I wonder today if there's a mom, a dad, a grandfather, a grandmother that would say, God, save me lest I perish. God, save me lest I perish. I wonder if this could be an altar call of honesty. Where we don't come together, but we come as individuals. We come as an individual man. We come as individual fathers. Not, oh, come on, if you're too proud and worried about what your mom and your dad or your friend or your wife is going to think, you're going to sink, friend. You're going to sink, friend. But at the beginning of a mind that's wondering, at the beginning of a life that's starting to err, whose eyes have pivoted from the master and are no longer locked in 
to Jesus. Would you hear? Would you heed the Holy Ghost today? And would you run? And would you cry? Oh, dear friend, cry. Oh, dear sinner friend, cry. Oh, dear saint of God, cry. Save me. Save me lest I perish. Lord, save me lest I perish. And so your story will end. And it will not be one of demise, destruction, or death. But it will be the story of a man who when he began to sink, he he self-evaluated and assessed the situation. And he cried out, Oh, Rakayabaye. Let the cries of God's people go forth before heaven. Let every man, every boy, every child, let every girl, every woman, every grandmother elevate your voice. Oh, redirect your eyes. Get them back on Jesus this Sunday morning. Come on, dear friend, get it back on Jesus.